The Lord be with you. We welcome you and thank you for joining us today as we begin our Holy Week worship on this Palm Sunday. Today we join with all of Christendom in celebrating the triumphal entry of the one true King, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As today we hear in the Gospel reading, Jesus rides into Jerusalem and that he does so in humble fashion on the back of a donkey. As the people gather to celebrate, they shout and they proclaim their loud hosannas, a word which means salvation has come. And so we too join with our own hosannas as we celebrate that salvation has indeed come for us. Salvation has come through Jesus, our Savior. Well, we're excited that beginning today and moving forward, we will be able to include music as part of our services. The lyrics will be on the screen for you, as well as voices for you to follow to sing along with. We'd encourage you, as you are able to do so, to join us as we sing the truths of our Lord and as we give praise and confession to the faith that we have as we do so with music. Well, then as we begin Holy Week, uh, we still will have Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter worship services. And those services are going to be done just as these services are that we are currently doing. And we're still offering the opportunity to receive Holy Communion during this Holy Week. But since it is Holy Week, we're only going to offer it on Thursday as we observe and celebrate Monday, Thursday, when our Lord institutes his Holy Meal for us. And so on Thursday, there will be times available from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And you can uh, go through the same routes, call the church office, or use the sign of genius to sign up to receive Holy Communion that day. Then the senior youth would still like to be able to provide Easter breakfast, even if it isn't able to be done in the typical fashion that we're used to doing it in. And so what they're going to be doing is they'll be offering breakfast burritos that can be picked up on Saturday, uh, April 11th, from 3 to 5 p.m. And this will be done drive through style up here at the church, much like the Wednesday meals have been done. And so you can take them home and you can eat them right away that day. You can save them for Easter breakfast or you can even freeze them uh, and save them for another time. Lastly then, before we begin, we are hoping to be able to compile a video to share on Easter Sunday, a video of all of our St. Paul's family saying, He is risen indeed. Now instructions on how to do this were emailed in the weekly updates that went out uh, on Friday, as well as being on Facebook. And so we would ask for your help in trying to get as many people from our church family to be involved with this as possible. We realize that there might be a technological challenges for some, and so if you know someone that could use your help or whom you might be able to assist in this regard, we would ask that you would be or that you would attempt to do so. And you can do it, do it with the social distancing guidelines, still staying uh, six feet apart from one another. Uh, perhaps it's meeting a neighbor outside and just helping them to take the video and sending it for them. Maybe it's a family member that could use your help. Um, but we're hoping uh, to, like we said, to be able to have as many people do this from our church family so that we can have this video uh, and still, in a way, uh, celebrate Easter together, even if uh, we're not able to do so in person. Well, as we begin our Palm Sunday worship then today, we do so as we hear the words of our theme verse, and they come to us from the gospel reading for today. It is from Luke chapter 19, verse 38. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. We join our voices in singing all glory, laud, and honor.
We begin then in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. We then confess our sins to God as we approach his throne of grace and we ask his forgiveness for the sake of our Savior and our King. Almighty God, you sent your Son to be our Savior and to rule over us as our King, but we do not always live as citizens of his kingdom should live. We turn away from his lordship in our lives to follow our own selfish desires. We do not love and serve others as we should. We sin against you each day in our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Have mercy on us and forgive us for the sake of our Lord Jesus. Amen. God, in his mercy, sent his Son to save us. Jesus suffered and died on the cross so that our sins can be forgiven. He rose from the dead to give us eternal life through faith in his name. Therefore, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, on Palm Sunday, you fulfilled the scriptures, entering Jerusalem as a humble king riding on a donkey. Your followers shouted praise and welcomed you as the promised Messiah, the son of David, as you took up the final road to the cross for the sake of our salvation. During this holy week and always, help us to follow in your footsteps and live as your humble servants, ready and willing at all times to love and serve others in your name. Accept the praise we offer to you, our Savior, King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for this Palm Sunday comes to us from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, O prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading then comes to us from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the second chapter, verses 5 through 11. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading then comes to us from St. Luke, the 19th chapter, starting at verse 28 through verse 40. After Jesus had said this, 
he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill, called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Tell him, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he said, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. This is the gospel of our Lord. We continue as we sing together our sermon hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, today is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday marks the beginning of Holy Week. Palm Sunday is the day that we remember and we celebrate our Lord's triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem. Palm Sunday. At long last, huh? At long last we're approaching the end of our Lenten journey. It's a journey which we began together some five and a half weeks ago on Ash Wednesday. As we've traveled this Lenten journey, we've done so mindful of our own sin and guilt. As we've traveled this Lenten journey, we've been aware of our Savior's innocent suffering and death. As we've traveled this Lenten journey, we've been focused upon Calvary's cross and also upon the empty tomb. It is a cross which was once used to kill Jesus. It's a tomb which could not keep Jesus. As we've traveled this Lenten journey, we've been doing so with a very thankful heart. We're thankful to God for the gift of Jesus, whose death and resurrection secure for you and for me 
the forgiveness of all of our sins, and everlasting life with Him. If you've been worshiping with us these past five and a half weeks, then you know by now that the theme for our Lenten worship services is to seek and to save. In these worship services, we've been following Jesus as He turns toward Jerusalem and the cross. We've been walking in His footsteps from the miracle of the raising of Lazarus, which we looked at together on Ash Wednesday, all the way to Jesus' own empty tomb, at which we will arrive on Easter morning. Remembering that this was the purpose for which Jesus had come. In his own words, his purpose was to seek and to save the lost. Palm Sunday. The time had finally come. Jesus would fulfill the scriptures. Jesus would accomplish the purpose for which his father had sent him the purpose established even before the world was created. The cross, it was nearer now, as Jesus made his way to Jerusalem. On the way, he stopped in Bethany, where his friend Lazarus had recently died. To the horror and the astonishment of the watching crowd, Jesus ordered that the tomb be opened, and then he called to Lazarus to come out. Lazarus, come out, Jesus said, and the dead man was restored to life. Those who witnessed the miracle spread the word of it, and some took the news directly to Jesus' enemy. Jesus' enemies began to plan all the more seriously for his death. Caiaphas, as the high priest of Israel, unknowingly prophesied the truth about Jesus. It would be better, Caiaphas said, to have one man die for the people rather than to have the Romans respond to the threat of Jesus' growing popularity by destroying the entire nation. Jesus' opponents even made plans to kill Lazarus too and to wipe out any evidence of that recent miracle. As Jesus later joined Mary, Martha, and Lazarus at dinner, Mary opened a costly container of perfumed ointment and she anointed Jesus' feet. Answering complaints about the expense and wasted money, Jesus explained that Mary was preparing him, anointing his body for burial, an event that would took place just one week later. Later, as they continued on the road to Jerusalem, Jesus repeatedly told the disciples what lay in store for him. He said that he would be betrayed and arrested and crucified. He said that he would be buried and then he'd be raised to life on the third day after his death. The disciples were puzzled. Perhaps they thought that their master and Lord could not die. He was surely too powerful for that, they reasoned. I mean, after all, he had just raised Lazarus from the dead. But still they wondered. They wondered what Jesus meant by that strange comment about rising from the dead. If the disciples didn't understand what rising from the dead meant, oh, they certainly did understand what it meant to be important, and they were very concerned about that. Oh, well, they argued among themselves as to which of them was the most important. Finally, James and his brother John asked Jesus for a very special favor. Since Jesus would reign as king in his kingdom, they asked to sit beside him, one on each side of his throne. That honor could only be granted by his heavenly father, Jesus said. But before the throne, Jesus announced that there would be suffering. Oh, soon Jesus would drink the cup of God's wrath against sin. He would not have a throne, but a cross. He would not be crowned with gold, but with thorns. And his followers too, Jesus said, that they would eventually suffer because of their faith in him. Jesus did not come to be served, he said but rather he came to serve and to give his life as a ransom. Now the time to pay that price, that ransom price had come. Jesus would enter Jerusalem to take up his last steps on the cross. This was the purpose. This was the very purpose for which Jesus had come. Welcomed by his cheering followers, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. He came just as the prophet Zechariah said he would come. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle 
and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Or perhaps the people remembered the story of Solomon, the son of David, who centuries before was acclaimed as king as he rode through Jerusalem on a mule. To welcome Jesus as king, the people waved palm branches like flags. Jesus rode his donkey over a red carpet formed by branches and coats thrown on the road. Jesus' followers shouted praise, and they welcomed him as the very son of David. Oh, they had waited a long, long time for this king, and now this king had finally come. Maybe, maybe now he would save them from the hated Roman conquerors. They called out to him, Hosanna, Lord, save us now. Indeed, Jesus was the very son of David, the promised Messiah of Israel. And he had come to save his people. But he had not come to save them from the Romans. Rather, he had come to save them from their sins. He would not wear this crown of gold, but rather he would wear that crown of thorns. Now he rode into the city very humbly on a donkey. But in less than a week, he would drag a heavy wooden cross, the instrument of his own death, through those very same streets. On Jerusalem, the crowds, on Sunday rather, the crowds welcomed him as their king. But on Friday, the title would be posted on his cross as the crime for which he was being condemned. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. This was the purpose, the purpose for which Jesus had come. He was the King who came in humility, the Son of God, God in human flesh, who made himself nothing taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. In humble obedience to his Father, Jesus offered up his life as a sacrifice for our sins. He died and was buried, and on the third day he was raised up from the grave, never to die again. His victory over death is our victory too. Joined together with Jesus at our baptism, we were buried with him and now raised also to new life, a new life of humble service in his kingdom. Then, on that last day, when our king returns in glory, we will be raised up. We'll be raised up from our graves just as he was, never to die again. And then our king, the king who was welcomed into Jerusalem, the king who offered up his life on the cross for us, the king who rose from the dead for us, will welcome us into his eternal kingdom, saying to us, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. And there... As the Apostle John saw in his revelation, we will take up palm branches once more. We will all stand with the saints among a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. We will be wearing white robes, and we'll be holding palm branches in our hands, and we will cry out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. In his holy name, amen. The peace of God which passes all of our understanding, keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Having heard God's word both read and now proclaimed to us, we make confession of our faith, and we do so as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. As we continue our worship service, even in the midst of this time of the pandemic and social distancing, we would like to encourage you and to have you know that the ministry of the church and of the school still is very much in full operation and that the Lord continues to bring about his will and his work even through us as his people. We would invite and encourage you to faithfully continue in giving back to God from that which he has first himself given to you. And so at this time, we worship the Lord with our offering. Let us then go before the Lord in our prayer. Gracious Lord, keep your scattered church in your mercy, that she may endure the assaults of the evil one and remain faithful for the sake of those numbered within your kingdom and those who have not yet heard the gospel and been brought to faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, by your Spirit, you have gathered us as your church and promised that wherever two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in our midst. Do not allow stress or disaster to distract us from the particular vocations into which you have called us to serve in the church, in our home, and in our communities. Grant to us every gift and every blessing needful, that we may honor our calling and serve you to the best of our ability, through Jesus Christ our Lord. O Almighty Lord, you have established the kingdom of the left, and hold accountable all those who govern in this and every place. Guide our president, the members of Congress, the governor of this state, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws, that they would serve nobly and wisely, pursuing the path of justice and protecting the citizens entrusted to them. Give them the wisdom and strength needed to bring our world out of crisis and back to stability through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Merciful Lord, your grace is sufficient for all our needs, and you have promised to be the strength of the weary, the hope of those who fear, the healing of the ill, the fullness of those disabled, and the peace of all who are distressed. Hear us on behalf of our nation and the world suffering pandemic and isolation, Hear us especially as we lift before you these names in our hearts and in our homes. We pray that all may be well supplied by your grace in every time of trouble, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Everlasting Father, it is your will that all should be saved and come to the knowledge of your Son by faith. Give to your word success, and deliver from error all those who live in darkness and fear, that they may walk in the light of the Lord Jesus, and have confidence for the trials of this world, and hope for the world to come, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed Lord, you give food to the hungry, and provide for all the needs in this mortal life. Grant to us a grateful heart, and knowledge to use wisely and well all that you have entrusted to our care. Bless those who work to make, prepare, deliver, or serve our daily bread, and give relief to those whose work has been halted through Jesus Christ our Lord. Holy Lord, as once your Son was welcomed with palms and hosannas, help us to welcome him who comes to us in the blessed sacrament of his body and blood. Guard us against false teaching, and help us to discern truth from error, that none may be led astray or lost from the fellowship of your Son. Look with kindness on all those who are separated from Holy Communion, and comfort them with your promises, especially that they are never distant from the mystical body of your Son, the communion of saints. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we pray the prayer our Lord has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you that gift of his peace now and forevermore. Amen. Empowered by God, let us go and do the work that he has given us to do. Our mission is to make known the love of Christ. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. <laughs> 